Welcome to this video where I will show you how to calculate a maintenance IV fluid rate for your pediatric patient. Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Anna and I'm a critical care register nurse. I'm also a pediatric clinical nursing instructor. I wanted to do a really fast video on how to calculate a maintenance IV fluid rate for pediatric patients. This is a, a formula and equation that I use frequently on transports if I need to initiate maintenance IV fluids. It's really great to be able to just pull out your phone or your calculator and check the rate that way. I don't have to go into an app, um, so that's really convenient. And also this is something that all of my students have to calculate each day in clinical for the patients that they've been assigned. And I found that students really struggle with this conceptually. So I wanted to give you that formula in case your brain works that way. You can just look at it and use it. But I also wanted to give you a kind of a visual that I use that I think about as I'm calculating out this formula or as I'm teaching someone how to do that. And at the very end of this video, we are going to go through a few examples just in case you kind of get tripped up along the way, so you can have something to refer to. So let's get started. So here's the basics of this formula. It is 100 mils times your patient's weight for the first 10 kilograms. It's then 50 mils times your patient's weight for the second 10 kilograms. And then it is 20 mils per kilogram for the remainder of your patient's weight. You will add all of those numbers together and that is the total volume that your patient will receive over a 24 hour period. And then to get your hourly IV fluid rate, you would divide by 24. This may be kind of weird, but I always picture this formula as kind of like a fountain. So, so work with me here and see if you can visualize this with me. Let's pretend you have a three tiered fountain and each tier is a little bit, what would that be? A little bit smaller than the one right before it. So you go small, medium, and large. And let's pretend that you have a large pitcher that represents your patient's weight. If you are pouring the pitcher, the water, the weight on the very first tier of the fountain, that represents our first 10 kilograms. So if your patient is less than 10 kilograms, you obviously wouldn't be all the way full in your first tier. So you wouldn't have any spilling over in your second tier. So for those patients, all that you would do with their weight is just multiply their weight times 100, and then that's your 24 hour volume. Now let's pretend that our patient is somewhere between like 10 and 20 kilograms. So we have our, our pitcher of weight, we pour it in, it fills up the first 10 kilograms, which is the 100 mils per kilogram. And then with the extra weight, it spills over into that second larger tier, which represents our 50 milligrams per kilogram. But the second tier doesn't get all the way filled up because our patient we're pretending is under 20 kilograms. So that's kind of how I picture that. Again, I don't know if that's helpful or not, but let's run through a few examples of patients of different weights using this type of visual. So let's pretend our patient is 39.2 kilograms. So if that is represented in a volume in our pitcher, we pour it in the top of our fountain and it fills up all of the first tier, which is the first 10 kilograms. It fills up all of the second tier, which is the second 10 kilograms. So we have 20 kilograms accounted for. Now with the remainder of the weight, which if you remember from the equation is 20 mils times the patient's weight, the remainder of the weight would be 39.2 minus 20 because we've already accounted for those first two sets of 10 kilogram measurements. So we would just subtract that and then multiply that number by 20 to get the rest of our weight. Of course, just like the formula says, we would then add up all three of those numbers and that's our 24 hour period volume. And then we would divide by 24 to get the hourly volume. Let's run through another example. Let's pretend that our patient is say 7.35 kilograms. So we're under the 10 kilogram mark. So if we have that volume 7.35 in our pitcher and we pour it in the top tier, 
there isn't enough volume for it to cascade and spill over into the second tier. So all that we would do is multiply that patient's weight times 100 because we don't have any extra weight to worry about any of the other tiers of the fountain or parts of the equation. Let's do one more example. Let's pretend that our patient is right in between that first and that second tier of the fountain. So an example weight for that would be 14.8 kilograms. So that's in our pitcher and we pour it into the fountain. We have our first 10 kilograms accounted for because our weight is more than 10 kilograms. We're going to have some spilling over into the second tier. And we know that since 10 was accounted for that we would have 4.8 extra that will fill up the second tier of the fountain. So then just like our other equations, you would take the first number of the first tier and then add it together with the second tier's number that you calculated. That would be your 24 hour total. And then you would divide that by 24 to get your hourly rate. So there you have it. I hope this video was helpful. This is the analogy that my brain still uses to this day when I'm calculating out a maintenance IV fluid rate for my pediatric patients. If you think this analogy was helpful, please comment and let me know if there's another analogy you have or another way of thinking about this that you think would be great to share. Please comment and let me know that too. And be sure that you've liked this video and that you subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any more content from me in the future.